quote Israeli historian and internationally recognized expert on fascism, Ziv Sternhell. Contrary to the claim that is often made, Zionism was not blind to the presence of Arabs in Palestine. If Zionist intellectuals and leaders ignored the Arab dilemma, it was chiefly because they knew that this problem had no solution within the Zionist way of thinking. In general, both sides understood each other well and knew that the implementation of Zionism could only be at the expense of the Palestinian Arabs. Hunger strike is therefore the only non-violent method of resistance open to prisoners whose sole demand is that their human rights are respected in accordance with international law. I think that all the world had seen what happened in Palestine last uh, month and before last month in uh, September and in October. Uh, what happened for the prisoners because they began uh, open hunger strike in the date uh, of the 27th September 2011. Uh, why the prisoners began the hung open hunger strike? Because they want to tell the uh, administrative uh, prisoner, prisons that uh, they are uh, want to be uh, to live as war prisoners. The Zionist movement could only choose between two strategic options to achieve its goal of the ethnic cleansing of Palestine. What Benny Morris has labelled the way of South Africa, i.e. the establishment of an apartheid state, with a settler minority lording it over a large, exploited, native majority. Or, the way of transfer, to create a homogeneous Jewish state, or at the least a state with an overwhelming Jewish majority, by moving or transferring all or most of the Arabs out. In order to accomplish the Zionist agenda, a policy of systematically racist, exploitative, repressive and illegal methods has been utilised by the State of Israel. Kada Anan is a baker, shopkeeper, student and father from Araba, near Janine in the occupied West Bank. He was violently arrested by the Israeli occupying forces in December 2011. He was taken from his home in the middle of the night, during and after which he was subjected to brutal beatings, systematic humiliation and interrogation. He began refusing food immediately after his arrest launching a hunger strike to protest administrative detention practices and his illegal and indefinite imprisonment. In another well-publicized case, Hannah al-Shalabi spent two years in Israeli administrative detention before being freed as part of the Jilad Shalit prisoner swap in 2011. However, she was violently abducted from her home in the occupied West Bank village of Burin and re-arrested in February 2012 again imprisoned without charge or trial. She began a hunger strike soon after her arrest and went without food for a little over 40 days before being finally offered a deal for her release. The conditions of her release, however, prohibit her from returning to her home for three years, in which time she must remain in the occupied Gaza Strip, far from her family, friends and the familiar surroundings of her childhood speak about the the prisoner in, in person, Israeli person, why they refuse to eat anything. You know we have it a, a big problem for the prisoner inside Israel. In human rights they send a report for about the prisoner. They the, the prisoner feeling uh, like uh, the policeman do it with him like animals. No justice. Some prisoners are very sick. Uh, some prisoners have a problem in his heart, in, in his legs, in his eye. 
It isn't safe him to so the doctor. Only the hospital in Belton, his name is Karamla uh, Hospital. It's a very bad, bad hospital. It's not good for the animal. Nothing more for the animal. There is no example in history, the first Israeli Prime Minister David Ben-Gurion once accurately stated, that nations open the gates of its country not because of necessity, but because the nation which wants to come in has explained its desire to do it. This succinct narrative framing of the Israeli occupation of Palestine helps us understand the root cause of the problem that this film seeks to address. Adnan's hunger strike focused international attention on administrative detention and sparked demonstrations across Palestine and the world. Adnan survived the longest hunger strike in Palestinian history, going 66 days with only water and salt, before reaching a deal with his Israeli jailers for release at the end of his six-month term. It is very dangerous for them inside the prison uh, to maybe one of the prisoners maybe will die, some of them will be illness, and uh, the media outside, all the media outside with the prisoners. Uh, very important that it is expensive for the director of prisons. Uh, it costs them very a lot, a lot of money to return this meal back, and not to take this. And it is a step of uh, struggle inside the prisons. And then when all of them began to join the others, it is very dangerous inside the prisons. <laughs> Since 1967, tens of thousands of Palestinians have been held without charge under this unjust and illegal system. Qadar Anan and Hannah Shalabi are just two such cases, with over 300 Palestinians currently held under administrative detention by the Israeli authorities. Of those currently held, 24 are elected representatives of the Palestinian Legislative Council. One man has been held for over five years under this system. Uh, must the prisoner refuse the food? Uh, because uh, the prisoner want uh, a freedom, want to live in, uh, in life freedom. Uh, the prisoner is just animals, it's humans and I give him my hands and told him still refuse the food to take your uh, dream from the Israeli military to live in, uh, to live in, uh, in peace, to, live in, uh, to return back to us, to return back to your wife, to your uh, father, to your mother, to your uh, son. So the Israeli director of administration in the prisons uh, know that if the prisoners, the Palestinian prisoners, uh, began and continue more than 10 days, more than 10 days, so they will continue. It is dangerous for them that the prisoners will continue there.